We're here at the Fanuc Open House, where me and Rowan are going to give you a little tour of this facility. But keep watching, because I'm about to get destroyed at table football by a robot. Absolutely, so that's, that's right at the end of this tour. The first thing we're going to look at here is the two demos here. So we've got a demo from Loop Technology on the left and a demo from Auto Tech Robotics on the right. And I'm just going to grab Joe. Hello. Sorry, Joe, how are you doing? So, 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 right, so this is Joe from Auto Tech Robotics. And can we have a quick look at your demo? Let's, let's walk around and have a look at the demo. Now, what are you trying to show can off here? We've got kind of a big, big Sorry, robot. What's it doing? So this is for tending a CNC machine. So ideally, one of the nicer robot jobs we've got behind us. Uh, this is a single <laughs> tending system. So it, no. you can load all your parts in, shut the door, hit your go signal, load your parts into the CNC machine. Once that cycle's finished, it'll then unload it, grab another one, put it back in, keeps going until you're finished. Brilliant. And we see the door here on the on the, mid, on the middle here. And you've got kind of, I remember the other Joe, because there's two Joes also Tech Robotics, <laughs> we've talked to both of you now. Yeah. If, we, if we go around the corner here, you've got a compound angle here, which is why have you got chosen a compound angle grid plate? So that's just for putting the parts back. It doesn't have to be precise, because if it falls down slightly, it just slides into those grips, and it will always be able to pick up from the same place. So it's, so it's purely, about locating in those pins. Yeah, so it's purely for the operator loading. They don't have to be precise in where they're putting it down. They can put it nearby, and it will locate into those pins. And these, what is interesting is there's, there's just tapped holes in the grid plate, so you could organize, reorganize this just by unscrewing, screwing in a few more pins. Exactly, just wherever you want them to go, they can go in, and all you have to do is just program that point for that robot. And then, because these are set out in a grid pattern, you can just use your offsets and just pick them up from there. You touching up, you you can move that entire grid up one space, touch up a singular point, and then you pick it all up again. Easy that because the robot already knows what, what what angle that plane is at. Exactly. And if just for the viewers who are watching, if you have a quick look at the, the aluminium table here, that is actually that was what would be the machine table in the in the in the robot drill. But obviously, you don't want to bother taking around a robot drill where you can have an aluminium plate that, that shows the concept. Um, and what I found fascinating is this is kind of your entry level. So people are just looking into automation. This is what they'll be interested in. Yeah, so we've, we've got a couple of other systems that are along the same lines. Uh, so this is just the, like you said, the entry level Flex 10. We've then got a Flex 10 Max, which can load your two robo drills with conveyors. So you have your operator load it up, hit a button, index is forward, load up the next set until your conveyor's full, hit the go button, and it'll do both robo drills for you. Brilliant. So a double tender as well. And that's if people want to move into slightly more automation. Yeah, exactly. And then. Beyond that, we, do, we can do bespoke systems for machine tending as well. So th this is almost like a standard entry cell. And if you want to upgrade it on top of that, you can. Thank you. And there's lots of other integrators here. So thank you very much, Joe. That's Joe from Auto Tech Robotics. And that was the entry level uh, tending system. I'm just going to see if I can grab. I'm really sorry, guys. Are you free right now, Adam? I'm really sorry. You've got a customer here. Sorry, thank you very much. Uh, I don't want to grab you away from any of the customers, but you've got a demo here to show, haven't you? I've, I've just scared him off. Um, but can you just tell me a little bit about, you've got a big robot here on the left-hand side, and what are you showing off with it today, please? Uh, yeah, so this is our sealant end effector. Um, so we have our um, sealant application on um, an aerospace component. It has a um, vision system, the, our own developed vision system that you can see on the side there. Um, basically, it's used for um, quality control, um, measurement and um, yeah, general inspection really. Because um, that vision system is very versatile. It can be used in process for picking things and also for making sure that things have been put in right in the right places and, and things yeah. have been sealed. And by sealing, you mean you've got kind of like almost like a little syringe here? Are you kind of are you actually do you have to design the whole end effector around that standard syringe? Yeah, so that one exactly as you say is a syringe. Um, so it's auto tool change. Um, so it's mixed um, by the operator and then put in by um, and then yeah, basically installed and decanted from there. We do um, larger systems where it's fully fed rather than a single syringe that, that's shown here. It's much more adaptable um, in this case. Um, but yeah, and different different syringes and nozzles to suit, really. But that's it. And I guess you have to have a real big cable assembly to handle all the, the wires and cables for all the complex systems here. And that end effector looks really nice. It's a really neat little package, yep. isn't it? Yep, it is. Yeah, that's exactly right. And having a you know, feeding sealant along a very, very long tube has its has its com complexities. So having it on the arm is very, very good. Absolutely. And I imagine we're looking at this almost like an aerospace, this like an aerospace kind of green part yeah. here, I see. But yeah. but sealant, I mean, you, you'll glue loads of different kinds of things, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So it's different two parts, single part, um, oven cured. Um, sealants we've done before, um, bonding, um, sealing, yeah, you name it, liquid shim. Um. Brilliant. I've just talked to Roger Green um, from True Precision Robotics, who's recommended you guys Loop yeah. Technology, because um, you're going to be working with him on a, and I, can't, I don't know if I can mention the customer, <laughs> but a big project that's really exciting. We've already done a video on that, um, so check that out on the MTD CNC website. Thank you very much, Adam, I appreciate that. So over to 
Uh, those are the two big demos in this warehouse side of the, the factory here, but I'm going to take you over to Tom. Go on, Tom, take it away. Thank you, Robert. Now, we're here with Jack from Nikon to talk about some of their, these are their precision tool holders. But I think what we need to talk really about is this up here. So, Jack, what is this machine and what are you doing on it? So this is our entry level uh, tool presetter. What we're doing here, we're just uh, measuring our single point boring system, the ZMAC uh, system. So we have got an auto detect feature on this presetter where it picks up the biggest value in X and the biggest value in Z. All you need to do, there's a little bit of manual intervention. Just find the tip on your screen, if I can do it without looking. Get in focus and you'll notice we've got a red cross there for the X, blue cross there for the Z, we've found our measurement. Now we don't have to measure anything on the machine. It's already done here, ready to go straight in. That's great, thank you. And as you said, that can be put straight into the machine. Now, I want to talk about this machine behind us because as well as running all your tool holders, it's also got one of your five axis trunnions on as well, hasn't it? So can you tell us a little bit about the trunnion on here? Because, yeah. and as you may have seen, Fanuc have actually are giving away little versions of the World Cup trophy that have been completely machined on here. So can you just tell us a bit about your trunnion? Yeah, that's no problem. So it's a, it's a direct drive rotary table, uh, which means it's not driven by gears, it's driven by magnets, basically. It's a very high precision rotary table, um, and it's, it goes up to 200 RPM. So if you really want to pump them feeds and speeds up, that's the table you want to use. So can this be put on any machine with any control? So the direct drive table is just available on the Fanuc machines at the moment, but the manual tables, we can retrofit to absolutely uh, the manual gears system, any machine. Now, this World Cup was completely programmed from the guys at Hypermill, and now we're just going to have a quick word with the guys at Hypermill because they're just next door. So if Liam, you come this way. So obviously that World Cup looks amazing. Now, can you just... Tell me a little bit about how that was actually made. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously it starts off as a, a, a billet, um, a br brass billet. So yeah, it's just roughing it down. Um, not as many, as many tool paths as you think, um, because gen generally you can drive these with, a, with quite a plain surface and use the part to do, and the software to do the, the, the clever bit. That's great, thank you. Now, something I'd just like to note where on the machine we've just passed, you may have seen an aluminium billet on the right hand side of that trunnion and that's because the guys at Fanuc are actually making these which they're making little clocks and these are actually you can come and if you're nice enough to the guys they might actually give you one now as you can see behind me Rowan's now at Phil to Miss, so we're going to move over and talk to these guys. Well, thank you very much, Tom. So I'm here with Alison. Buongiorno, Alison. Buongiorno. Va bene? Va benissimo, grazie. I think she's got way better Italian than me. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. The, the pronunciation is much better. Yeah. You're a professional. Now, Alison, you've got a little demo here. And okay. can you just show me the demo while we're talking? Beautiful. So you're making some mist here, and we're going to see it, I guess, get sucked up. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's absolutely. This is to give you an idea a little bit of how oil mist works within a machine tool, like at the Fanux. And um, the filter mist unit is designed to protect people by extracting the oil mist, returning the oil to the machine tool, save a little bit of money on the coolant, and uh, protect the workers and give clean air in the workshop. Absolutely. There's many benefits to this. And I see we, we go up and down machine tool uh, machine tool shops up and down the country on almost every machine we go in there will be a filter mist machine or a filter mist system already um, why do you think people invest in filter mist and why do they need one on, on, on every machine tool they've got that's a really good question Rowan the point is that we um, we provide clean air in most workshops uh, filter mist are everywhere we well people ask for a filter mist they don't even ask for extraction so uh, it's about protecting people and there's more consciousness with HSC and the health and safety. So really it's about protecting workers, protecting the machines because it also helps to uh, cool the inside of the machine tools as well. So it protects the tooling. Um, so many different benefits. It stops the almost getting on the floor so you don't slip, it doesn't get in the ducting, clean lighting and everything else. I love that. There's so many benefits to a filter business. And also, they're also, they're, they're coming yellow now, don't they? If you have a quick look up there. A lovely yellow unit um, based on our partner, Fanuc, who we deal with. And um, the idea is that we'll blend into whatever anybody needs. So we're very adaptable. Perfect. Adaptable and you need one every single machine tool. Yep. Check out Filter Mist. Thank you very much, Alison. Yeah, all the best, Rowan. Take care. Beautiful. So there's loads of uh, exhibitors here and I've got another one here. Sorry, hello, Chris. Have you got a customer here or I don't want to kick anyone away? Brilliant. So I'm here with Chris now. You're from Kairos. Now, can you yes. just tell me a little bit about the demo we've got happening over here? Yeah, so um, we were sort of approached by Fanuc to come up with a, you know, a small little two rotation positioner, um, you know, suitable for use 
for like sort of cobot welding applications or sort of cobot 3d printing applications um, so you know it's obviously got the two uh, fanuc servo motors that allows it to be programmed direct through the robot control and why did you pick fanuc servo obviously we're here at fanuc open house and that's why you'd pick a fanuc motor but what what about the fanuc motor and servo and the amplifiers and the way they work together makes it easier to to implement a system like this um, it just allows for oh, well, simultaneous motion. It just means that you can you know, program the part and, and, and run and turn and obviously weld at the same time. And you see the movement is really smooth. It works really well with the Fanuc Cobalt, as you can see just in the demo here. Yep, absolutely. So, um, you know, obviously we can't run a, a welding operation in front of the camera at the moment, but uh, well, it's, you can see how the principle of it and how it would work. And is a smooth movement, is that important when you're making a welding operation? Yeah, absolutely. So actually through the fanuc control, they've got all sorts of, you know, like wobbles, etc. So, you know, specific for welding, um, which, you know, makes it really smooth and really easy for the customer to use. Brilliant. And you guys don't, this is kind of the smallest system that you've done so far in like a, in a, in a four axis or, or a two axis ro a rotary system. But you do kind of much bigger systems as well, We're kind of talking big kind of robot rollers. How do they work? Yeah, so our sort of heritage is within the, you know, big industrial robotics section. So we do, you know, quite large component positioners. Um, we do sort of robotic linear tracks, etc. So, yeah, we're designed to fit with, you know, any robot manufacturers. But, you know, obviously the FANUC equipment works really nicely. Perfect. Thank you very much. I mean, those big, thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate that. So those big, follow me, Liam. We're going to go over to another robot drill over there. But those big robot gantry and track systems, um, Again, I've seen a few uh, really interesting uh, applications. Oh, I've got Tom running after me now. What's up, Tom? How are you doing? No, how are you doing? Which way are we going? We're going to the other machine. Oh, is that yeah. over there? Well, I we, well the no, drill. actually, we've got two machines we can go to. So we can either go to the machine around the corner, which some people, sometimes some people look at the robo drill and think, oh, it's only for like plastics and aluminium and stuff. So we can go and see that one cutting steel, or I'm going to leave this decision to you, or do you want to see some micro machining? Oh. Point one holes. I do like a bit of micro machining. Right. It's running right now. Let's go yes. and watch that. Okay, Let's go so, in. So, and we've all seen robot drills cut steel, I'd hope. Yeah. Not just out of any uh, on demos. So I think actually micro machining is not so, something you see every day. Shall so, I leave them with you, Tom? Yeah, that's fine, mate. Okay, so go on, on, on this machine, we're using drills from ITC, and they're actually doing micro machining. So they're doing point, is it point 0.1, point 0.3, and point 0.5 holes. So even with Liam on the camera, I don't think you'll be able to pick up the point one holes because they're just unreal. Same as you won't even, if I just get my hand in, you'll not even be able to see the drills, which is just... And then all the tool holders from here are from Big Kaiser, which I think we just need to have a quick mention about Big Kaiser. So Big, Big Kaiser do the most precise tool holders because Big Kaiser actually make the, the jig for machine builders to do their, when they calibrate their spindle, the face and tape per spindle, it's big Kaiser that actually have the part that fits in, which everything's made to. So all their tool holders are, they've got tool holders on times 5D that have a run out of one micron. Now, I'm here with Andy from Fanuc to talk about this. So Andy, what is it like doing micro machining? It's fascinating. I mean, it just takes your, your level of precision and uh, attention to detail to another level. You've got to have everything absolutely spot on to drill these holes right. And obviously, you can see in the machine, we've got the Renishaw uh, laser probing. So what's that actually been used for? So on this, we've got the Renishaw NC4 Blue. Um, it's, a, it's a special purpose uh, laser for checking tool lengths, but we're using it in this application for tool breakage detection. Um, to drill a hole half a mil diameter 50 times D, we do it in successive stages. So we'll spot drill, we'll drill to maybe five times D, and then we'll go in with a slightly deeper drill to drill it to 50 D. And, so, let, and let's be honest, sorry, just to quit you in there, let's be honest, if that tool breaks yeah. with a human eye, especially a point one drill, you can't even see if that's broke yeah, or not. Uh, you, you cannot see it. So we, we go in, we check the tool, each tool's uh, not broken using the laser, and then we'll go in with the next drill to drill it a bit deeper. And just as we just move around here a bit, this is, so they're actually having to use a magnifying glass yeah. to see the point one holes to make sure they're drilled right. So we've got 0 0.5 here, 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Uh, the 0 0.1s are drilled three times D. Uh, and these, these half a mil holes go all the way through a 25 mil thick part. Now, obviously, to a, to a human eye, you've actually got one in your hand. Yeah. and. If, if, see the top. So if, 
Liam, I don't know if you can get that, but you can, you, you can just see him. It actually looks like you've got specks of dust yeah, on yeah. your part, which well, that's, is... That's just, that's just the surface ground finish. We've lapped that one on there, and look how bad the lap part looks on the screen. It's, uh, it just shows up the inconsistency of the surface finish. But even the surface that you're drilling into when you're micro-machining has got to be flat. It's got to be smooth. It's, it can't be rough. Um, at least a little ridge in the part, and you're going to skew that drill and it'll break. So... There you go, micro machining on a robo drill. And just going back to Big Kaiser, when I was saying about they actually make the gauge, sorry, they make the gauge for all machine tool builders to build their spindles to. Now, I'm going to move down to Rowan, and Andy, we're actually going to see you again in a little while to see how robo drill works with steels. Now, I can see Rowan stood here, absolutely the lovely Rowan. So, Hello. where are we going to next? Uh, I don't know, this is your bit actually. Oh, we're you going again, another sorry. Drill. You're loving... So, we're, all right, he's Rowan's left, He's in. left me with all the, the robot demos, which I absolutely love, but <laughs> I've not had to have a look, been able to look at a machine tool yet, so. <laughs> sorry, so, right, so we've gone from micro-machining, and now we're actually gonna go to robo-drill machining steel, which and you've seen And what interests you about this demo? Well, I think what interests me about this demo is, is a lot of people you talk to and you say, why don't you have a robo-drill for small applications? It's well, it can't cut steel, can it? It can only cut plastics and uh, you'd look at it, you think it's a small BT30 tool holder, 30 spindles, a small table. You think, oh, there's no way it can cut steel, but it can. I'm going to leave you find out how. <laughs> Thank you. So, Andy, if, Liam, if you want to get in there to see. So, Andy, what are we actually doing? Obviously, this is just cutting dry on this demo because you've just it run is. this for a customer, but you are actually doing live testing. Uh, live demos here at Funnel, can't you, this week? We are. We've just cut this one for a customer that wanted to see some uh, steel cutting on the robo drill. Uh, because they've not got experience of the robo drill, uh, they said they didn't really know how it would react to cutting, to cutting steel, say, with an 80mm face wheel. But we've run this part for them today and they've, uh, they've gone away converted. Well, like Rowan was saying when we walked up, you wouldn't think a BT30 little machine like this would no. be able to hold an 80 mil face mill. Well, to run an 80 mil face mill. So this is actually the part now you're machining. So can you just tell us about a bit about what's happening on this part? Yeah, so um, it's a lump of EN8, so 080 M40, which is a medium carbon steel. Uh, we've got an 80 mil face mill that goes across the top. Um, a 16 mil very, um, very mil extreme from NVIDIA. Really good cutting tool that goes around the outside, profiles it. Bit of angle work, drilling and tapping and some full slotting as well, which with a 12 mil, uh, very mil extreme. Um, one times D, full cut, no problem. Now, did you know that a robo drill could do a full slotting application? Because I'll tell you what, I didn't. Now, Andy, thank you very much for your time. Now, we're gonna move around to work holding now, and we've not, we've not seen many work holding, apart from the, um, the Nikon five axis trunnion, but we're gonna move on now to Rowan, who's at Shunk. And before today, I kept getting that name wrong because I kept saying it wrong. So, Rowan, we're just going to come to Rowan. So, I'm going to leave you here with the uh, the guys from Shunk. Thank you very much, Tom. Now I'm here with Marcel. How are you doing, Marcel? Sorry to grab you. Just like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just as quick as that. So, if we have a quick look over here. Um, you guys obviously are well known automation for end effectors, but it's not just end effectors. You guys do a lot of work holding, a lot of tooling as well. What do you think people know Shunk for, and where would you like to be in the future? Well, it depends, that's a great question. So people who buy one set of Shunk know us for that and they have complete no knowledge of the other side. So if you are with Shunk for automation, that's all normally you know about. And if we're with us for work holding, that's all you know about. Uh, but we are the only company out there that I know of that can offer the whole scope from machine bed to end of arm on the robots, really. Because if you're into automation in food and beverage or in packaging, you'll know robotics, you'll know FANUC for automation, you'll know Shunk for your end effectors, but you might not have an experience in the manufacturing and the machining side. So you guys have a, have a lot of competence in a lot of different areas. And let's talk about the kind of more specific, specific stuff. So you've got kind of compliant uh, deburring systems. How would someone use one of those? So these are, um, it, it's a newish range. So what is what we call the material removal range. So you have deburring, uh, reciprocating filing, uh, polishing, all sorts, and it's soon to be going electric as well. And we've got, so, sorry, deburring here, this, is this reciprocating filing? Reciprocating, so, and you have compliance on all of these things. So if we release the pressure, you can... So you're reducing the pressure in the... In the so we just release the air pressure, and you can have a little bit of compliance on the units. 
So this is so if you imagine so for viewers who don't know what what the compliance uh, is for, it can move around. So if you get a part, yeah, so we bring a part in, it will move a little bit and won't damage the part. It will exactly. just deburr so it. These will adjust how much pressure you apply to the uh, the component you're trying to operate. So if you have here the um, sending. Right, so normally what you want to do, you want to follow a contour. So if you have a perfectly flat and you want to really go aggressive, you're going to raise the pressure and this thing's going to be rock solid. If you want to be more compliant, meaning that it's going to follow the contour of the part, you're going to release the pressure a little bit and this thing will give. And so that means that you always remove the right amount of material at any time. So you don't have to rely on compliance on the robot. That saves the life of the robot, makes the process more reliable, more repeatable. Absolutely. Do we, are we seeing any of these uh, applications in the main hall as well? There's a lot of robots that are doing some kind of polishing there operations. Is some of these, yes. So it's very popular. It's um, particularly uh, popular in the automotive sector. So lots of welding, lots of splatter. Is where this thing kicks That's in. When you want to clean up and get a beautiful looking part. Yes. Also, one thing that people are using this a lot for, you lots of people say, well, but I already did burr inside my CNC machine. Yeah, well, that's a very expensive hour, right? So you can, if you already have machine tending, why not pair that with a two changer? You go from gripper to material removal, take that part from the expensive machine, finish it off and then carry on. You almost get a bit of free value add from that robot that would otherwise be sat there for 90% of the time. Essentially, exactly that. So with a fairly small investment, you have a very quick return of investment. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Marcel. That's all we've got time for. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've just heard from Marcel about uh, deburring, extra value add operations, and talking to some, some customers and some of the integrators who, who, who manage integrating robots. Sorry, hello, Tom. How are you Hi, doing? You're right. um, <laughs> talking to some of the integrators, they say there's a lot you can do with a robot that you don't have to just the CNC machine is not, it doesn't have to be the focus. If you're doing part washing, part bagging, part deburring, loads of different extra operations. Sorry, Aaron, just to cut you in, we have a... Oh, we hello. Have a, what are you doing? We're, doing it, we're just doing a little tour around all of the exhibitors, Chloe. Um, have you done it? Have you been we're, we're currently doing it right now. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to go and have a look at the, f the, table, the table football f demo. Oh, have you, you seen that? Me? No, no, no. Let's yeah, go. Do you want to have a go? Really? Let's Come on, there. Okay, let's go. But what? like you were saying, a lot of people think robots are just for A or B. But we're about to see what a robot can actually do, because I've, you've already had a go at this game, and I have, and you it can guess if I'm well. not very good. In, I'm not go much well. into football anyway, and I got absolutely destroyed by this <laughs> robot. It just goes to show what they can do compared to a, a normal human. I mean, the amount of power these things have got that got in them oh, almost almost fell over there. <laughs> um, and I've got to say, this is one of the best demos. Well, the most exciting demos I've seen. Talking to Tom Boucher early, he said, well, people love like the golf demos we do, the, the table football demos we do. And I said, well, why don't you do like a snooker demo that tells you where to pot it and stuff? He said, yeah, they're great, but those are not the applications you see in the industry, unfortunately. But they're the ones that get people excited and laymen's like me, well, not missing necessarily laymen's, but, but like simple people like me will find those super <laughs> exciting. Well, I mean, what? So essentially, you're just trying to find ways to cheat games, aren't you? You just want robots to do it for you, so Absolutely. you don't have to do it. Well, I'm sure if a robot could win the lottery for me, that would be perfect. <laughs> right, um, well, we're here, so I'm going to... Take gonna, that, that yeah, you. you can take That's my it. mic because this is not going to go well. Absolutely, so Tom is going to be playing table football right now against a robot. Okay, come on, Chloe. Chloe's going to be the commentator, I'll be the all right? commentator. I'm yeah. Gabby Logan right now. Who's Gabby Logan? You don't know who Gabby Logan is? Okay, okay, we'll have this chat later. Okay, <laughs> we'll talk okay. about Gabby Logan later. Come okay, on, so... Oh, that's <laughs> the robot number one. That's that was it. classic one Tom. To the robot. Come on. He I'm, weren't did ready. Did you see that strike? He wasn't ready. Here we go. One, one nil. Oh, almost. Come on, you can beat me. You're almost doing... Oh, oh there we go. Score. It's one all, score. One all between Tom and the robot. I love it. There's a but VR system as well behind. Have you this seen? is fantastic. And if you see how much power the robot's got in it when he's trying, look at oh. how, look at the speed of that. <laughs> he's I got no even, chance. There's, there's no way. I've seen at least three people do this, including myself. There is no way you can even react that quick. The ball is Ooh. in the goal before you even know it. Yeah. It Tom, only ever Tom blinked and it yeah, gone. That's it. Oh, Tom's getting, getting competitive now. He definitely wants to win this. Go on, Tom. Do you keep oh. it from, oh, that's it. You he's, keep it from it, moving. The robot it. can't do it. Ready? Oh, there we go. That's three it. Now. Two one to the oh, robot. Two, one. Sorry. Oh, this is pay. Oh, three one. That's it. Robot one. Tom. Oh, God. sorry about that, mate. This is painful to watch. <laughs> How do you feel? Football. How do you feel being beaten by a robot? Absolutely gutted. I got one in, so I'm happy with that. Okay. So this has been the Fanic Open House. We're still going Thursday, Friday. Make sure you come and check it out. There's 40 exhibitors, loads to see. Come and play against the robot.